Hi, I'm Lauren, and in this video I'm going to share a few strategies you can use to navigate your computer efficiently. Uh, remember that efficiency looks different for everyone, so as you're watching this video and afterwards, take some time to think about what works for you. And so my goal today is to help you spend less time clicking around the computer and more time doing the task you actually want to do. So keep watching to learn more about keyboard shortcuts, the command line, and device ecosystems. Before we get started, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, like this video to let us know you're enjoying our content, and comment with any of your thoughts and questions. So let's talk about keyboard shortcuts. My primary strategy for computer efficiency is to substitute keyboard shortcuts for clicks. Operating systems and applications usually come with standard keyboard shortcuts built in to help you navigate around. And you can find a list of them in the settings or preferences. And another way to find them is to search online for the keywords, your operating system or application, keyboard shortcuts. Every time you're about to reach for the mouse and click, try to use the corresponding keyboard shortcut instead. Why? Well, it takes a lot of time to bring your hand over to the mouse and click. And then also when you use the keyboard shortcut, your hands are centered so that you can quickly start typing again. So now I'm going to teach you a few keyboard shortcuts you can use to look up the shortcut you need if you're about to click and you don't know what to substitute it with. So let's pretend I'm taking notes while watching the Decrypted by Us Python tutorial for beginners. And here, Ilyana's just talked about the print command. So I'm going to note down that print displays something onto the console. So I want to bold the print word now. And I could reach over to the mouse, highlight it, then press the formatting button, and then press this bold button. That takes a lot of clicks though, so what if I want to do it more efficiently? Here's three steps you can use to find out what shortcut you need to learn. So number one, I want to switch applications to a web browser. So on Mac, you're going to use Command-Tab. On Windows, you can use Alt-Tab. Number two, we want to open a new tab. I'm using Chrome, so I'll use Command-T. And then on Windows, you'll use Control-T. Three, we're going to search for these keywords, your operating system, your application, then the action you want to do, keyboard shortcut. So I'm using Mac, Notes, and I want to bold the text and then keyboard shortcut. So this pops up right here. It says I can use command B. So let's try it. Now I'll use some keyboard shortcuts I've already learned to try it out. Command tab to go back to notes, command arrow key to go to the beginning of the line, shift option arrow key to highlight print, and then I'll use what I've learned, command B, and we've highlighted print. To help recall these keyboard shortcuts in the future, you can note down ones you've just learned onto a piece of paper or a document on your computer. And then once you've learned enough shortcuts for a task you do pretty often, you can even try unplugging your mouse or covering the trackpad with a piece of paper. And you can use this as an evaluation to see how many shortcuts you've learned and then ones that you'd like to learn in the future. Now I'll show you some keyboard shortcuts I use often. These will be for Mac, but I'll try to share similar ones for Windows. The first is command space that opens the spotlight search. And I use this to open apps and look for documents. So I can open Chrome or I can look for my documents folder like so. And for Windows, you can press the Windows key that'll open the start menu and you can start searching in a similar way. The next one is when I want to switch between windows for one application. So that will be the command backtick. It's especially convenient when I have multiple Chrome windows open so that I can keep track of ones like I have for school, ones I have for personal use, etc. Another one for Chrome is switching tabs. So I'll use control tab to go forward and control shift tab to go backward. I also use keyboard shortcuts to navigate text and I use this all the time. So alt arrow key to jump between words, add shift to highlight words, then command arrow key to go to the end of lines, add shift to highlight the whole line, shift left and right to highlight by character, or shift up and down to highlight by line. And then on windows, you'll use control arrow key to jump words and the home and end buttons to go to the beginning and end of line. Then lastly, this is a keyboard shortcut another Decrypted Bios member showed me, thanks Shinru, 
is control command space that opens the like emoji viewer so i like to add little emojis to make note taking fun you can also add custom keyboard shortcuts to your operating system or some applications in the settings page for example i like to change the command space spotlight shortcut to alt space because it's easier for me to click when using the keyboard, there are methods to type more efficiently and keep your hand center. So one method is called touch typing. I really like this video and we'll also put the link in the description. My next strategy is to use the command line instead of the GUI. And GUI stands for graphical user interface. So that's what you use to navigate through the contents of your computer. For example, let's say I was writing code while watching the Decrypted by Us Python tutorial and I want to open it again. Well, I would open Finder on Mac, and then I would click through the folders, so Documents, Python Tutorial, and then I could double-click on Tutorial.py to open it, and that was a lot of clicking. So is there a way to just use the keyboard to get to that? Yes, there is. We can use the command line instead of Finder. Let's practice using keyboard shortcuts to access the command line. So Command Space to open Spotlight Search, look up Terminal, which is the default app for command line on Mac, Enter to open. Now I'll change directory to the location of my Python file. Once I'm here, I can view my Python file and we're done. If you'd like to learn more about how you can use the command line to navigate your files, check out our tutorial. If you'd like to learn more about how you can edit your files, check out our tutorial about text editors where we talk about Vim and Emacs. And then if you're interested in more tips for the command line and efficiency, I really like this article and I'll also link it in the description. We've learned about navigating one computer efficiently, so now I'll talk about how you can use multiple devices together. If you own more than one computer, such as a laptop and a phone, you can connect them so you can use them together. I love Sharon Chin's explanation of a device ecosystem. I'll link the article below. And Sharon writes that a device ecosystem is the idea that connected devices can share enough information and functionality with each other for users to start a task in one device and finish it in another. One way to create a device ecosystem is to pair together devices that are already designed to be connected. For example, I have a MacBook and I also have an iPhone, which are made by Apple. And while researching this video, I was looking at my phone at articles. I had found an article I really liked, so I copied the link. I went to my laptop and I pasted and it pasted the link I had copied from my phone. That was really useful to do my task on multiple devices. That's just one example. There's a lot of other ways that you can use connected devices. Another way to create a device ecosystem is by using cloud services. So I use Google Drive a lot to share my work with other people. So I could start a task by writing a document on my laptop. And then later when it's more convenient for me, I can open that document on my phone in the Google Drive app and look at it then. And this is just one example. There's so many other applications and services that you can put on multiple devices. So you can start your task in one place and finish it in another. That wraps up my strategies for navigating a computer efficiently. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it, comment with any of your questions, and subscribe to our channel for more videos every other Monday. Bye for now.